Hello everyone! In this video, we will see how to create an outline shader in Unreal Engine 5. To do so, we're gonna first create a material. So right click in the content browser, look for material, then choose material. We call that M outline. I'm gonna open it. In the settings of this material, I'm gonna change the material domain from surface to post process. Then only one node is available, the emissive core. Now I'm going to create a new node and I'm going to look for a scene, texture and from the corner of the scene texture, I'm going to connect that to a LERP node. So LERP stands for Linear Interpolate, so the name is actually Linear Interpolate in Unreal Engine. Click on that. So this LERP will be connected into the emissive corner. We see an error is because the send texture ID is set to scene color. What we want here is post process input zero. The moment you do that, you can see that the error is gone. So in our lab node, we have a, b, and then the alpha value. Right now, the a value is good, so we are clear for that. Now we want to have the b value. In this case, the b value will be the color of the outline. To do that, I'm going to look for a color node. So I'm going to look for constant and I'm going to look for a constant three vector. Right here, I'm going to right click on that and I'm going to convert that to a parameter so we can change the color whenever we want. And I'm going to call that color. This color will be connected directly into a make float node. So I'm going to connect the red value here to make float and I'm going to look for make float 4. So the red value will be connected to X, the green to Y, the blue to Z, and the alpha here will be also connected to the alpha of make float. We're changing the parameter of this color to make that a float, which we will connect inside the love value. And instead of just connecting that to B, I'm going to look for a multiply node and another constant, but this time just a constant vector which I will right click on and convert to parameter, call that intensity. Actually, I'm going to call that glow intensity. And this will allow us to change the intensity of the color. So right now we have a color here that we multiply to this intensity. So we're getting the intensity of that color, which we can then use directly into B. This just allows us for multiple scenarios and creating different type of outlines. So right now we have the A and B value of the loop. The most complicated one is actually to get the alpha value here. So the loop switches between the value A and B based on this third value, the alpha value here. And here what we want is to get the depth of the scene so we can see if the element is chosen, it would be highlighted and how highlighted it would be. So let's get started. What I'm going to do here is just move that up and comment here. And I'm going to call that color. I'm just going to change the color of the comment. There we go. And I will move back. And we're going to work on creating the alpha value. So I'm going to search for a node called view size. And from there, I'm going to look for a sale node. Then I'm going to connect that to a clamp node. What we're doing here is we're getting this the value uh, of view size and we are clamping that between one and two. By default, it's zero and one. We want to have one as the minimum value and two as the maximum value. Now I'm going to create another parameter. So I'm going to create another constant. This time, once again, a constant one. So by default, it's just called constant. And right clicked, convert to parameter. And this will be the width of the line. So while we created the color earlier, we still need to have the actual vision of what the line would be around the object. So by default, I'm going to leave this value to zero. Um, actually, I'm going to change that to I'm going to change the default value to 0.5, but since it's a parameter, we can change that later on. 
This will be connected to a multiply value. And we're gonna get the clamp value inside the multiply. So here we're just creating the line around the object, but we still haven't defined uh, how to know uh, where the line would be. We have the size of the line, the value is clamped and all that, but we don't know uh, around the object where the, the, this would go. To do that, I'm gonna look for a node called sin texel size. This will be multiplied with the result of the previous multiply. From there, this multiply node will connect into two different nodes. First, I'm gonna look for a mask, in this case, component mask. By default, we have the RNG value, which stands for red, green, and blue. And I'm actually, actually, I just want the red value here. And then I'm gonna connect the multiply node to another mask component. And this time, I do not want the red value, I just want the green value. I will connect the first component mask into an append node. It's actually called append vector. And as you can guess, the second component mask will also be connected to another append node. So append vector. Make sure this is the append vector under math and not under vector ops. The red mask is connected to the A value of the append. The green mask will be connected to the B value of the append. Then I'm gonna look for a constant, once again a constant one. This time this will not be a parameter, I'm just gonna leave the value to zero. And this will be connected to the first append in the B value, but also to the second append, but this time for the A value. Now that we have that, I'm gonna create another constant, and this time the value will be minus one. So right now things might be a bit confusing. What we are determining here is to show where the line will appear. So to keep going, I'm gonna connect the append into a multiply node. And as you can guess, I will do that twice. In this case, multiply again. And just like the append nodes, this will go inside the B value. So the first append is connected to multiply on the A value and the second append is connected to a multiply node, but this time for the B value. And exactly like before, I'm gonna connect this constant we just created, which value is minus one, directly into both multiply. So the first one for the B value and the second one for the A value. So if I look into my uh, material right now, we can see that everything kind of looks like it's very close to each other. So I'm gonna move the color and the final material node more on the right. Now, I need to look for a screen position node. From there, I'm gonna get another mask, so component mask. And this time, I will not change the default value of red and green. So the screen position allows us to get position of the player so we can see based on this position, based on where the camera is, what will be outlined on the object. So I'm gonna connect that into an add node. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna create multiple, four, I'm gonna create a total of four different add nodes. So add, I'm gonna press Control C and Control V to go faster. So we have a total of four different add nodes. And I also want to get four different scene texture nodes. So I'm gonna right click, look for scene, texture. By default, the scene texture is set to scene color, but what I want here is depth. So I'm gonna look for scene depth. We want to have the depth perception from the camera to see where the outline will be. Everything we're doing here is in 3D, so we need to have this depth value. I need a total of four nodes, so I'm gonna copy and paste that to have a grand total of four. So once again, I'm just gonna move everything more on the right side because this is taking a lot of space. And back into, back into this material. 
I'm gonna connect the first anode into the UV of the first scene texture. And I will do that actually for all of them. The second anode will be connected into the UV of the second one and so on. Just gonna try to space things around. Here we go. And all those anodes need to be connected. So what I'm gonna do is get the mask component we have from the screen position, the one where we are using the red and green value directly. And I will connect that into all the A values of all the add nodes. While this is great, we still need to connect something to the B value. So in this case, we're gonna get uh, the result of the first append we had here, connect that to the B value of the first add node. Then I'm gonna get the multiply result, the first multiply result, connect that to the second add node. Then the second append node at the bottom here will be connected to the third add node into the B section. And finally, the result of the second multiply, the one that's at the very bottom, will be connected into the B section of the add node. Now, we have four different values here. And what I actually need, I just realized that I said we need the scene depth. What we actually need is custom depth. So I'm just going to change that in all of my nodes right now. So here we go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy one of those nodes, Control C and Control V. So I have a grand total of five different scene textures and all of them are set to custom depth. This one will not be connected to anything on the UV side. However, the color result of this custom depth will be connected to a subtract node. And what I'm gonna do here, just like the add nodes we created earlier, I'm gonna copy and paste all of those. So I have a total of four different subtracts. The very top custom depth node its color is connected to the first subtract. It will also be connected to all the subtract nodes into the A values. So I'm gonna get color, all of them into A. Now that we have all the A values for the subtract nodes, I'm gonna need to get the B value. In this case, this is actually very easy. We just need to connect all the scene textures to uh, the B values. So the first scene texture, the one that is connected to an add node, so I'm just gonna ignore the very top one here. The one that's connected to an add node in the UV, I'm gonna get its color and drag that directly into the first subtract. For the second one here, I will also get the color and drag that into the B node here of the second subtract. For the third one, I'm gonna get the color, connect that to the third subtract into the B value. And finally, the last one, get the color and connect that to the B value. Now we're almost done. We just need to get an add node here. So the first subtract is connected to an add node and we need to add the result of the first subtract and the second one. And the third subtract node will also get to another add node where we get the result of the third subtract node and the fourth subtract node. So in here, you should have something that looks like that. Both subtract one and two are connected into an add node together and three and four are also connected to another add node and we also want to get the result of both these add nodes so i'm just going to get another one and i'm going to connect the result of the first add node into a and the res result of the second add node into b so at the end we have all this operation all this calculation we're getting the depth of the scene we're getting the lines the width of the line of the outline, all that ends up in one single value here, which is the result of this add node. And we are almost there. So I'm gonna connect the result of this add node into a divide node. And this divide node will be attached to another constant. So in this case, look for constant, or if you want, you can just press one on your keyboard, press one, and then just simply click into the material uh, editor and this will create uh, a 
this value this time will be hard coded to minus 100. Finally, I'm going to connect the result of that into a subtract. And we are just going to subtract 1 to that. So by default, B is set to 1. That's all we need to have. And I'm going to get a clamp node here. By default, the minimum value should be 0 and the maximum value should be 1. We will uh, keep those values. So we want to have the result of all of this operation set between 0 and 1. This is why we need a clamp here. And this clamp will be connected to the loop. The alpha value of the nub should be set between 0 and 1, so this is why we're clamping this here to make sure that we don't have a higher or a smaller value for some reason. And this is pretty much all we need to do here. So now I'm going to save this material, go back into my scene, and I'm going to add a volume. And actually I want to post-process volume here. If just like me you have a post-process volume already in your scene, you don't have to create a second one, so I just did that for the sake of the example, but I'm going to delete it that and in this post process volume i'm going to search for infinite extent and i'm going to make sure this is checked on to true now i'm going to look for material and under your post process volume you should have a post process materials by default it should be an array with zero element in it so i'm going to add an element and I'm going to click on choose and asset reference. What we see here is we have none in the array. I'm going to drag and drop the material outline we just created and put it right there. So now this post process has a material, but nothing is happening here. We can see that there is no outline anywhere. So what we need to do is for each object we want to outline, for example, I'm going to select this cube. I want to look for depth into the search bar here and we can see that under rendering into the advanced settings there's a value called render custom depth pass we want to turn that to true and we can see that we have an outline here because i did not change the color of my outline we barely can see it so what i'm going to do is go into my material change the default color from black to something white and change the glue intensity to 10. And now we can see that the object is outlined. So by default, this material, if I can create an instance of this material, I'm not gonna rename that, so it's just gonna be called material outline instance. If I open that, you can see I can choose the width, the intensity, and the color. You can change that to, let's say, blue color. I want to have a very thick line and a very strong intensity. So I put 10 for the glow intensity, 10 for the line width, and the color is a bluish. Back into my post process volume, I can look into materials again and change this R element to the instance I just created here. And we can see the outline is very obvious here. It's actually a bit too much, but it's, uh, it's working. So we can just change values. Let's say I want a small line, 0 0.5, I'm gonna save. Here we go. So this is it for this video and we'll see you in the next one.